Today I'm going to check out the Team Wolf Zuk X05 mechanical keyboard. Honestly, I want to have a look at this more for the concept that it delivers and not really for the other keyboard components. Team Wolf brands this as a CIY or change it yourself mechanical gaming keyboard, but we'll get to that later. They also claim a 60 million click lifetime, which happens to be more than the Cherry MX key switches, and that's pretty much it for the box itself. Opening it up, we are greeted with a nice branded protective paper, and then we get a guide for the board, and then the keyboard itself. It's also good to see that they're using some soft cell foam for protection, and then we also get four extra key switches and a super neat keycap and key switch remover combined. Again, I won't be going too in depth with the keyboard itself since I've reviewed many of these cheap type keyboards from China and it's really very similar to many of them. It's a tenaculous keyboard once again, meaning that it has no numpad and it features a metal shell which happens to be sandblasted aluminium. And this one in particular is in a goldish champagne color but I think silver would have done better. The keyboard shell itself actually looks really nice and sleek since there's no brushing and it's just flat which I do prefer. And the chamfer that reveals the more shiny aluminium finish is actually flush with a metal plate that the switches are mounted to. Unfortunately they have quite large branding above the directional arrow keys and it is raised so there's no getting rid of it easily. On the front side it does feature their Team Wolf branding but this is done in the right way where it's just stealthy and there's also a CIY sticker which can be easily removed. The bottom of the keyboard continues that smooth finish and has round edges which looks really nice and there are then 4 feet on the bottom in which 2 are flip up feet but unfortunately they aren't rubber tipped. It features a fully standard layout so replacing these keycaps won't be a problem at all and that might be quite a tempting thing to do as these backlit keycaps feature that gamer font or typeface that some may like but I know most people won't. The cable is non-removable and isn't braided and the aluminium top plate has a little protrusion that bends down to secure that cable which is something a bit different than usual and the USB end comes covered and is labelled and is also gold plated. This is a backlit keyboard so there is a bunch of lighting modes that I won't go in depth with but it's very similar to other Chinese boards, but it does light up with some odd color choices. There's white, green, and blue for whatever reason. I know that for myself, I always prefer just the singular color if the colors can't be customized. And I think just the straight white would have benefited the keyboard greatly. But basically, it has a bunch of modes and can also hold different lighting profiles, which you can customize on the keyboard itself. And it also has very shortcuts. It has no software, so it's all with onboard memory. Everything is outlined in the guide, which you can pause to have a look if you want. One thing I did notice that can't be seen on camera is that the keys that are lit up in white seem to shake really, really fast, like the characters themselves. I showed other people and they also saw it, and I would love to hear if anyone else had that same experience. Now, with that all out of the way, we can get to the main attraction of the keyboard and that's the change it yourself aspect. Taking off the keycaps, we can see that this keyboard uses out to move blue switches, which are just Chinese Cherry MX clone switches, which pretty much have the same characteristics as the MX blues, so they are clicky and tactile. But I think this may also come in different brand switches, but I'm not too sure on that. But the cool thing is, is that by using the cool little switch removal tool that we saw earlier, we can remove the key switch with absolutely no desoldering needed. Removing the key switches is really easy. Basically, it's just like pulling any other key switch out without the soldering. There are plastic tabs on each side of the switch and these just need to be pushed in and then lifted up. I'd be wary on constantly changing these though as these are plastic and in time they will wear out and snap. Before we also saw that we were given 4 extra key switches, which all have the approximate characteristics of the uh, Cherry MX counterparts. These key switches however are slightly different as they have a much larger hole or gap for the LEDs to shine through, and they also have clear casings. If we compare it to a more traditional switch, we can see how the Cherry MX switches have 4 small holes on the bottom. This is where the two LED pins would go through on a more normal keyboard, 
which is then soldered to the PCB. However, this keyboard has SMD LED backlighting, meaning that they are surface mounted diodes, so it doesn't go through the key switch, but is just on the PCB itself. Interestingly, the stock Altimo blue switch, which I got off another keyboard, is very much like the traditional key switches. I've got a bunch of various key switches here, and it's as easy as just popping them into place, making sure that the two switch pins align with the two holes. So I put in a variety of popular brands. In the top row we have some Cherry MX key switches, which I suspect would be one of the main contenders for this. Under that are some Kale and Razor switches, and then we have the Altimo switches that were supplied with a keyboard, and the directional arrow keys are some Gatoron switches. And turning it on, you can easily tell that the black casings pretty much completely block out the lights, which may be a good thing if you absolutely despise the lights, but the Gatoron switches that I have have a translucent white casing, so the light shines through it quite well, but it doesn't have that gaping gap like the Altimo ones for the light to go through, so it's not as bright. But now I'll take it apart to see how this thing works. The keyboard uses some Torx screws at the top, and the rest are small Phillips head screws. It took me a while to figure out how to pry it open since it wasn't just falling out, and I didn't want to scratch anything. But you can push these two white bits to help push it out a bit, but then you can go to the back of the board where the cable comes out and lift it up there. And since there's no top shell, we just have the two parts. The bottom of the shell is comprised of two parts, much like other similarly made keyboards. We have the exterior aluminium shell, but then on the inside that has all the structural elements is a plastic shell. This holds all the screw bosses and adds some rigidity to the shell, as it also does feature a decent amount of ribbing on the bottom. And then we have the main keyboard itself, which is just the metal plate with all the key switches mounted to it, and then the PCB underneath it. The PCB is where it gets really interesting, where we can see a bunch of these black plastic bits scattered all over it. Usually we would just see a bunch of silver solder joints everywhere, but on each piece we have these two little holes which house the little copper contacts. What these contacts do is just connect with the two key switch pins, on the key switch of course, and in doing so make that connection. So it's a really simple solution that could be easily implemented by other companies. Now let's try to mix some of these key switches up. And one thing to note is that if you're using some aftermarket switches that are PCB mount switches, then just cut off the little prongs that protrude from the bottom of the switch. I probably changed about half of them, so half of them are still Altimo blue switches, and it's quite a novelty look. Before we chuck the keycaps back on, these are double shot ABS plastic keycaps, which are actually pretty nice, but shame about the font. And the stabilizers are a bit different, but they are still compatible with whatever keycap set you have. And with the keycaps on, there's once again that obvious problem with the lighting, with a couple of dead zones here and there. I would just recommend keeping the lights off if you're using other key switches, and it kind of does look better without them anyway. But then we also run into the issue of some keycaps being higher than others. The Altimo switches sit much lower than all the other key switches that I put on. The Cherry switches in particular are much higher with the Gatorons being a close second. This is a pretty bad situation if you want to scatter your key switches like what I did. However, if they were clustered or grouped in certain rows or areas, then I suspect it wouldn't be too much of a problem and can perhaps even be better for distinguishing different areas better. But for a scattered layout, the typing experience is hindered by the varying heights. But as for the different weight and feel of each key switch, my typing speed wasn't impacted by much at all. Since I only changed about half of them, it's still a clicky dominated keyboard, especially by adding the MX Blues, Gateron Blues, and the Razer Greens into the mix, so your experience may vary. So overall, the whole concept to be able to switch key switches without having to take it apart and do soldering work is really interesting and fun to play with, but you also have to consider acquiring extra key switches to do this, and to make it even harder, they gotta at least be clear case switches if you want that backlighting. The keyboard itself is a pretty nice board with a metal construction and a minimalist look, although the large branding 
game of font characters and odd color backlighting all detract from what could have easily been a nice looking keyboard and it's just really amazing to think about what could have been. I personally feel like it's a kind of tinkerer's novelty kind of keyboard but this can still totally be used as a main board if you want. I've been working on some different custom things for the last while where I'll step it up a notch so stay tuned for that in the coming weeks.